I think my shirt is too tight, man. Taki Fugu. This is the notorious Japanese fish. Everyone knows it for being a toxic fish that can take you off this planet. Tetrodotoxin. This is the bacteria that is found in a lot of species of puffer fish that creates a neurotoxin. And I'm going to eat it. Hopefully not the neurotoxin. Just the fugu. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the show. This is EKB, EKB TV, and you are watching while I'm in Japan. So let me tell you a bit about me. Formerly a classically trained cook and butcher. Spent a lot of years in the kitchen, trying new foods, being experimental, trying to be adventurous with my palate. I made myself a promise in culinary school that I would try just about everything at least once, just so I can know what to serve other people and also for my own personal experience not to be terrified because there are a lot of different foods out there with different cultures and a lot of people trying different things. I wanted to expand my mind and my palate. And you can't get much more adventurous than eating fugu. Now for me, I don't really like fish, especially cooked fish. But over the time, I've grown to love sushi and sashimi. It's taken me a bit to work my way up there. Now it's time to conquer the real challenge, fugu, the extreme sushi. So if you made it this far, you know that I've gotten a chance to check it off of my bucket list. Fugu has become a delicacy because of this mystique and because of the mystery behind the fish. The risk of being able to take your life into your own hands by something that you ingest intrigue people and just draw them in. And I gotta be honest, I'm one of those people. Not necessarily the risk factor, but the skill that comes in preparing this fish and being able to try something that is outstanding, new, and a little bit daring, I gotta do it. I had to try it. My wife was thinking that this wasn't the real deal because there are a lot of different puffer fish that's out there that's not so dangerous. Some of them are domestically farmed, others just don't have the same amount of neurotoxins to affect the human body. But where I'm going, this is Tiger Fugu. This is the real deal. So I got a message from some friends. They said, hey, do you wanna come along on this adventure with us to try Fugu? Hell yeah! Had no idea where we were going. I'm just going along. I had to be there. So we travel by train from my city to Kawasaki. Taking the train, we get out in Kawasaki, and this is one of those cities where you have to go see. Everyone knows Tokyo, but Kawasaki is definitely a major, booming, and bustling city. There are a lot of things to see and a lot of things to look out for. This is one of those places where you get a lot of strange people coming up to you, trying to invite you to their izakaya or their restaurant, and they want the gaijin, the foreigners, or the tourists to spend a lot more money than the locals would spend. Just a quick tip, keep an eye out. Definitely see myself getting drunk here. We traveled around Kawasaki, got a little bit lost, trying to get to the restaurant. It's cool, one of the friends kind of walked us to the right direction, but it was worth getting lost a little bit because you got to see all that was happening in the city. All the different things in the alleyways, on the different corners, all the lights. This is definitely a city worth traversing and finding your way around. We finally made it, this is our stop. We stood outside, kind of figuring out what to do, trying to read the menus, and looking at the puffer fish. This is gonna be our meal. Y'all gotta get pictures. Bruh. After we kind of figured out what to do next, we made our way into the restaurant, took our seats, had a few laughs, <laughs> and <laughs> this is not the right restaurant. <laughs> so we had to go upstairs. We made our way in, took off our shoes, and were greeted by the staff. They were polite and lovely. The ambiance was wonderful. It's quite a spectacle. The mood was set. You feel like you're in a traditional Japanese place. All the woods, the warm lights, the low seating. Let's get prepared. Let's order some food. The waitress came. She spoke a little bit of English and she really tried to be patient with us as we fumbled our way through the menu. It's mostly in Japanese. Even though we got an English menu, it was still a lot to figure out. So we ordered this combo set. Now a set in Japan is basically like your standard American combo. A lot of the menu is a la carte outside of that. But we were able to get 
a six course meal. Plus we added one extra dish to kind of make it a little bit more fun. This can get kind of expensive. All the dishes all together with three people was about $172. So we had to split about $60 a piece. For the courses, you get blowfish skin, sashimi, fugu churanabi, the hot pot, fugu karage, fugu ojita, and the hoji ice cream. And we also ordered sumbiaki, which is the char grill fugu. For the first dish, the blowfish skin, kind of made me a bit nervous. I gotta be honest with you, because from everything that I read is that the skin of the fugu is poisonous as well. You expect to kind of get the numb lips, and that's the sign that your body may be triggered by the neurotoxin. I didn't experience any of that. What I did experience was a fantastic advertisement. So you have your green onions, you have ponzu, and you have the chili paste in here. More on that in just a moment. You mix that all together with your hashi, your chopsticks, and you go for it, you dig in. It is bright, it's delicious, and it's actually one of the best dishes that's on the course. And what makes it so fantastic is the texture of the skin. It's almost translucent, but a little bit of the color of the skin, and it's not quite gelatinous or rubbery. It's somewhere in, in between. Wonderful texture, bright flavors. I'm a fan. Next up is the sashimi. The sashimi is served fanned out on the plate with sudashi and momoiji orishi. It's taking me a few times to say that. Still don't think I have it right. Momiji Oroshi. Momiji Oroshi is somewhat like a chili daikon paste that's similar to wasabi. This is of course their highlight dish, what a lot of people are expecting when they're thinking of fugu. It lives up to the hype. When I initially tried it, I tried it with nothing added to it, just the fish. And I actually think that was a really good thing to do. You can see by my reaction here that it was okay. It's not much flavor, but you get the nice, chewy texture of the meat that's a lot more firm than a lot of fish that you will normally eat raw. But when you go through the proper steps and eat it the right way and mix all the, the vegetables, the ponzu, it's bright, it's delicious, and I can eat this all day. Next is the fugu chirinabi. Now this is a dish that it took us a little bit to make. It's a lot and it's a surprising dish. You have this basket that's your hot pot with a tin piece of metal that is at the bottom and a piece of paper. And somehow this piece of paper is holding everything together. You bring the water to a boil and then you put in your fugu that is still on the bone. And it's so fresh that if you're paying attention, it's actually still moving. There are smaller pieces as well. The large pieces, you cook for about six minutes. The smaller pieces, you give them about two to three minutes to cook. And you also add in your vegetables, your lettuce, your mushrooms, and let this all work together. The rice noodles involved. I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about this dish. But when it all came together, the meat was flaky and tender, full of flavor, and surprisingly good. Also a must try. Fuku karage is next. Now, karage is popular all over the internet, super popular in Japan, and it also rivals American Southern fried chicken and Korean fried chicken. It really is delicious. The fugu lived up to the same height. As I mentioned before, cooked fish is not really my thing, but this was tender. Nothing was fishy about it at all. The crisp and delicious batter mixed with the flaky fish, mind blowing. Outstanding, the sumbiaki, the char grill. They bring out a huge clay pot with the charcoals, put the grate on top, and it's kind of like yakiniku, you cook it yourself, but it only takes a couple minutes. Just a couple quick turns, and you dip it in your ponzu, with the caramelization on the fish, a little bit of that charred taste. Outstanding, oh. flavors are popping everywhere, <laughs> and you can see from my reaction, I absolutely loved it. Fugu Ojiya. The presentation and display for this, when they come in and take what's left of the water from your hot pot and they add in rice, eggs, a little bit of salt. To be honest, they could add a lot more salt and pepper to this. Bring it all to a boil to make a nice, warm, and soothing porridge. Flavor profile wise, this wasn't my favorite. I didn't love it, but the process that it took from the skilled hands and the time that they put into this, the creativity, I thought it was phenomenal. 
Just not something that I plan to eat. Unless I add a little bit more soul and spice to this. Last but not least is the Hoji Tea Ice Cream. It's a simple dessert. It's not a lot going on with it. If you go into any 7-Eleven, Lawson's, anything like that, you've had a lot of the different tea ice creams with the little wafer that goes with it. It's kind of like a very down home taste for Japanese. And it's also coming very familiar to me too. The hoji was delicious. The tea flavor is, is there. It's a nice way to cap off the dish. Not the best, but after you've enjoyed fugu five ways, plus some porridge, it's a good way to end the meal. Celebrate with your friends, having a beer. It's a good time. I don't know. Taking you guys on the journey. I hope you guys enjoyed. This was my way to try fugu five ways. Check something off the bucket list while I'm here in Japan. There's more to come. There's a sushi go round. There's my trip to Okone. And we got the other shows that are here. Hope you guys like the show. Please click the like button, subscribe, and thank you for watching. Peace. Oh, also, be kind to your neighbors all over the world.